Okay, uh, hi class, it's me, Mr. Stark. I put together a little um, Google Slides um, about the symbiotic, symbiotic relationships that I want to uh, concentrate on this week. Um, there are three major ones. Um, there's lots of different examples, and I just put together a Google Slide giving you some examples. So a symbiotic relationship is when two or more species live together. A, um, there are three examples. The first is mutualism. Um, I've got several examples of each. Uh, I love this picture. Um, so in mutualism, both species benefit from the relationship. Um, the example one here is the bee and the flower. The bee moves about from flower to flower collecting pollen. And you can see that this bee is laden with uh, pollen underneath and it's all of its little hairs on his legs are just loaded with it. Um, and as he's doing this and going back and forth in the process, the bee is transferring pollen from one, plant, one flower to another. This pollen transfer allows for the flower to reproduce and produce a seed. So in this case, both the benefit, the bee benefit from getting the pollen from the flowers and the flowers benefit from getting cross-pollinated. Example two, uh, in your body, you have lots of different types of bacteria. Um, in humans, uh, you have bacteria in your stomach that help you, that aid in digestion. Uh, you also have bacteria that aid your immune system by responding to other disease-causing bacteria that'll go and um, attack it and help protect you. So in this case, the bacteria benefit because they, they're in that area where they're getting um, food and nutrients from you, but they're also protecting you from, they're helping in the digestion process and protecting you um, with your immune system. Example three, um, the mutualism is the sea anemone and the clownfish. Here are the sea anemone provides the clownfish with a, like a habitat, a home, protection, um, because the protection comes from the fact that this sea anemone is one of those things that we learned about, is a nadarian, is a, has stinging cells, and the clownfish has a thick layer of mucus on itself um, that protect it from the stinging cells from the sea anemone. <clears throat> So in return for getting a home to live in, the clownfish cleans the sea anemone and provides nutrients uh, in the form of waste, and it scares away other predatory fish such as the butterfly fish. So uh, that's a win-win for the sea anemone and the clownfish. So that's three examples of mutualism. Our next example of a symbiotic relationship is commensalism. That's where one species benefits and no harm is done to the other one. I got to see, I got to fix that here. Um, our example here is the, uh, the shark and the remora. The remora is, attaches itself to the shark, kind of hangs on, catches a ride around, and it gathers up any food particles that are ejected out of the shark's gills uh, during the eating process. The remora also eats parasites off the shark and goes in, cleans its mouth out too. So uh, in a way that's commensalism, that's the shark and the remora. The remora benefits, the shark's not harmed. Uh, but if the, if you look at it another way, it also could be mutualism because the remora is benefiting and the shark is benefiting by the remora eating the parasites and cleaning his teeth. So that's example one for commensalism. Example two, is the um, commensalism is the tree frog. The tree frog uses the plants for protection because it blends in um, with the camouflage and it also um, provides the tree frog with some shelter. The frog benefits, plant is not harmed. Our third type of symbiotic relationship is parasitism. That's where one species benefits and one is harmed. So the example I use here is Giardia. Giardia is an intestinal parasite that's ingested from contaminated water. Um, so that's like when you go to the boundary waters and 
uh, camping and you don't have, you use water from the lake, you need to treat it, filter it, or boil it in order to prevent yourself from getting Giardia. And what happens with that is the uh, Giardia parasite infects your intestinal wall and it causes you to have severe diarrhea illness. So bad case of that, and if it, la if it can last up to like six weeks, um, and that will generally lead to some pretty severe dehydration. So you, there's medicine you can take, but the best thing is just to prevent it. Um, so that's Giardia. Uh, another one that uh, fascinates kids is uh, par another example of parasitism is the tapeworm. Um, this is a, a little tapeworm that's ingested. It enters a, the body usually as an egg in contaminated water or from eating raw or undercooked meat. And the tapeworm will uh, develop and attach itself to the intestinal wall. It has this little scolex head that grabs onto the intestine. And then this ribbon, this tapeworm, um, just um, robs you of nutrients. Um, and so therefore... Um, you know, if you have a tapeworm, you can eat and eat and eat and eat and never be, you're always hungry. Okay. So in this case, the tapeworm benefits uh, because it's getting a free food from you and, and it's, you are being harmed because you're being robbed of nutrients. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Our last one, example, example three of parasitism is the sea lamprey and the trout. And in this case, what happens here is the lamprey has, it swims up along kind of the fish and then it grabs on with its mouth. It has all these little inward port, port pointing teeth and it grabs on and it uses this little tongue in here to rasp a hole in the side of the fish. And then it, once it's attached and rasped the hole, it will have uh, like blood and nutrients be able to be robbed from the fish. So fish swims around, doesn't really get, um, doesn't have too much um, resistance on it, but um, it will constantly be stealing and robbing nutrients from the fish. So the lamprey benefits from getting food from the fish, and then the fish is harmed because it's robbed of its nutrients and food. So these are three examples of symbiotic relationships where organisms are two or more organisms are uh, living together and how they interact um, all for now talk to you later bye uh, just one more thing there the uh, so what I did here is I put together a slideshow of um, examples of symbiotic relationships and this is exactly what you are going to do on Thursday and Friday um, Thursday and Friday of this week, you are going to be working on developing your own slideshow with your own um, examples, two examples of each type of parasitic relationship. So you would have the definition, you'd have the example of what the organisms are that are involved, and then how that relationship goes, and then... Um, gives you a um, giving me an example um, a photo example of what that would be like um, so you'll have um, probably have six slides maybe seven one with uh, the definition for symbiotic relationships two for mutualism two for commensalism and two for parasitism um, so that's kind of a, a look ahead at what you're going to be doing on Thursday and Friday all right, that's all for now. Have a great day. See you on Tuesday.